Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're just very grateful. Everywhere you're sitting now, lift up your hands and thank God for my prayers. I want to just go ahead and thank God. Thank God for my prayers. All of you in the other locations, go ahead and thank God. And all of you watching online, thank God for my prayers. Thank God for my prayers. Thank God for my prayers. We saw might the mighty hand of the Lord. Limando consiste le practicanos. Celegrete shilima combra sandona. Father, once again, we thank you. We thank you for your mighty act. We do not take it for granted, O oh God. We thank you for the impact. We thank you for the ministry of the word of God that came strong. We thank you for the attendance, how you brought people. We thank you for the miracles. Shalege roses kole manraske prandele rustele batakwate. Pekutsi shile bembronte kamanantes. Epene kores in parliament ome skotrene mataya. We thank you for the flow of the gift of the spirit. We thank you for the healings and the miracles. Oh, baraba shando karapita kavai. Thank you for that which you've done, that which you're doing, that you're yet to do. We give you the praise and the glory in Jesus name we pray amen amen praise God Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 quickly Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 we're going to use this to pray and maybe this time around you stand on your feet Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 can we please stand on your feet please all of you online, whatever you're doing, please let's stand on our feet. All of you online in the other churches, let's stand there. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 12. The Bible says, Then the Lord said to me, It says, You've seen well. So God was trying to show him something. So during wine press, there was something that God showed you about your life. There was something that God said to you. He said, You've seen well. But see what it says now. It says, You've seen well, for I will hasten my word to perform it. This is a prayer. That all the visions and the word that God has shown me for this year, that my father hasten it. Hasten means speed it up. He said, hasten to perform, hasten to manifestation. Can we go ahead and pray, everybody? Let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we're praying that every word, every vision you put in our heart, you will hasten him to perform it to God. That's what we're asking you for in the name of Jesus Christ. You will hasten him to perform to God. Let me just speak to the God of the God of the God of the God of Chakra tona bra ataya. Every piece, every word spoken, you will hasten to perform, O oh God. You've done it before, you are doing it again. Like a parosia pratica baba, a chakra tona rakata. Everyone that came with expectation that you've met, O oh God, you will hasten our call shata. We are praying for the fulfillment of prophetic word in the name of Jesus. In Jesus, we will pray. And Father, we thank you. Well, thank you because you are good and kind. And we're asking that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you will hasten to perform your word, O oh God. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's shout a big hallelujah. No, no, that's not a big hallelujah. Let's shout a big hallelujah. Let's do better. Let's shout a big hallelujah. Let's shout a big hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you, choir. Someone give this to the choir. You can have your seat. Glory to God. Yeah. So this morning, this morning I'm speaking to you about something very powerful. I'm speaking to you about having a rich Bible study and prayer time. Yeah, having a rich Bible study and prayer time. Having a rich Bible study and prayer time. And the reason I'm saying so is that while some people struggle you know sometimes when i want to sometimes when i'm checking on my kids if they have prayed or read, read the bible so you know sometimes i'm like have you prayed or read the bible and you know one will tell me i prayed and read my bible and another one say that um, i prayed but i've not read my bible and another one say i've not prayed you know some just the answer will differ and i'll be like so what are you waiting for go and read the bible right now and when i say go and read the bible i can see it on their face that reluctancy you're like you know and, and they want to do that and you know that can happen for kids because you're training them but for adults is that how your prayer life is 
that when the Holy Ghost say pray, you know, when it's next level time for prayer, and you're whining. And the reason why you do that is because maybe you do not understand what, how powerful prayer is. And maybe for you, prayer is what you do in the morning. It's like, you know, I just take thin. It, it works or not. I just take it. I just take it. No, it's more than that. It's practically more than that. So there are two ways to treat this topic. I can go step by step by step and say, do this, do this, do this, do this. And this side, you're going to have a very powerful prayer life and have a very powerful sort of life. But the other approach I want to take, which is not one, two, three, four, because I've done that before. If you go back to our messages on YouTube, you'll get exhaustive teaching on how to read the Bible, how to pray, something like a step to it. But today, I want to change the orientation when you approach prayer. And this change in the orientation would, de- would, would make a difference between the person that really prays and is deep and the person that just comes and goes. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. And I want to introduce you a concept, a a concept that is greatly misunderstood in the body of Christ. And that's the concept of waiting upon the Lord. It's a, it's a very, it's a very deep spiritual concept. Let's read quickly. Isaiah chapter forty, verse thirty-one. Yeah, that, that, that's where you will find those words expressed. Isaiah chapter forty, verse thirty-one. The concept of waiting upon the Lord. The Bible says, "And they that wait upon the Lord, you can see the words there, shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles." They shall run and not be weary, and they shall work and not faint. So the question is this. The question, what is waiting upon the Lord? And some people think waiting upon the Lord is, pray, is fasting. Well, because if, you, if you've been a Christian for a long time, you will hear this same thing like, um, um, are you eating? They say, no, we're waiting upon the Lord. Well, the truth is this. When you're waiting upon the Lord, you could be fasting. But you don't have to be fasting to be waiting upon the Lord. So what is waiting upon the Lord? Some people think, some say, wait upon the Lord just like, I'll just stand still like this. It's more than standing still. You know, I'm just standing still. No, because those are the erroneous conception of what it means to wait upon the Lord. So the question today is this, what does it mean to wait upon the Lord? Waiting upon the Lord is not a passive lying around. Like, I'm just waiting. That's not what it is. Waiting upon the Lord is positioning like a hunter for the moment of a catch. Let me explain what that means. Have you ever seen a hunter before that has a gun? An hunter has a gun. And you see the hunter, the hunter will just rest somewhere in the bush. And if the hunter hears sound of an animal coming, the hunter positions himself and is waiting. His position is, he's waiting to take the shot on that animal. And that's what waiting upon the Lord is. When you say you're waiting upon the Lord, you're waiting for an, like an altar for when the move of God will walk so I can catch it. Are you here, somebody? That's what it means to wait upon the Lord. That, uh, what does it mean to wait upon the Lord? Waiting upon the Lord is um, positioning yourself for a God moment. Like, you know, I know that I can sense like the animal will move, that God will move. But I want to make sure that I'm in that place where I can hold on to it. Oh, glory to God. Somebody say glory to God. So what is waiting upon the Lord like? Let me give another illustration. I don't know how many of you have gone to a five-star restaurant before. And when you go to a five-star restaurant, these are restaurants where you don't sit yourself. When you get there, they'll say, wait for your waiter. You know, is that not what they say? And they'll give you a waiter, yes or no? Oh, that's weak. Yes or no? Yes. Can I hear a big hallelujah? hallelujah? All right. So they say, wait for your waiter. And your waiter comes and sits you down. And even when you have ordered the food, the waiter goes away from you. But guess what? The waiter always has you in sight. In fact, a waiter that is trained, before you need something, it will notice it. Because, because as you're eating, the waiter does not necessarily stand beside you, but is a waiter. A waiter waits. Come on, come on, come on, come on, somebody. Come on, come on, somebody. Come on. A waiter what? Waits. So, when you're eating with your wife and you're waiting, like maybe there's no salt. Like, mm, and you're looking around for the salt. The waiter, a good waiter, doesn't wait for you to call. He comes and says, excuse me, sir. 
Do you need something? How, how does he know he needs it? Because he has found the opportunity. When we wait upon the Lord, this is what it means. We are in that place to see the movement of the Spirit. We are in that place to see the orchestration of the Spirit. So that we can say, Lord, you are moving. Is there something you want done? That's what it means to wait upon the Lord. You know what I'm saying this? When you carry this attitude to your prayer, your prayer will not be boring. Because in the place of prayer, you are watching what God wants to do. You are watching what God wants to say. So, I'm not having a list. Some people say, we need prayer point. Listen to me. Prayer point is for a level of people that pray. When you get to the level of senior, no need for prayer points. The prayer flows. <laughs> if you're looking for prayer point, just know you're on a dimension. At another dimension, did Jesus need prayer point? No! As soon as he entered there, someone said, what did he say? We don't know what he said. It was deep conversation. That only means to wait upon the Lord. What would change your Bible study and prayer time is that if you can begin to approach your Bible study with a sense of waiting, if you can begin to approach your prayer with a sense of what? Waiting. What is the sense of waiting? As I go into prayer, Marshall, I'm like, Lord, what are you trying to do? You know, as I go into Bible study, what, what are you staring? So, I'm reading all of this scripture, but what is the Lord staring in my heart? What is the God moment in that scripture? So, I'm not reading the Bible as a religious book. I'm reading as a book for encounter. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They that wait, they that wait upon the Lord. Why is it, why is it powerful to wait upon the Lord? We just read it in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. It's on the screen. It says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I want to ask you a question. Why do you feel depleted? Is it not because you've not spent time to wait upon the Lord? Why do you feel drained? Is it not because you've not spent time to wait upon the Lord? I want to ask you, all of you have cars. Have you noticed when you start serving your car for six months, there are noise that will come out of your car that you've never done before. Yes or no? Your car will start misbehaving. <laughs> why is it jerking like that? No servicing. The reason why you are jerking is because you've not been serviced recently. So every time you get to work, you are so, you, you are, you are so upset, you are so angry, everything is getting at you, your emotions are raging, you say it's your hormones, but have you been serviced? When last did you go to Bethel and have an encounter? When last did you drink from the river of life? When last did you have an encounter in the world? Many of you are driving your spiritual life one year, no servicing. The, the oil is black. It's, not, it's black and thin. The radiator, there's no water inside. Your engine is overheating. You now wonder why you are getting depressed so easily. Because you have not been serviced. And let me say something to you. I think of wine press. Because it, it was mass servicing. But now that wine press is over, what is your method for servicing yourself? Because we cannot wait till next year for you to be serviced again. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. Waiting upon the Lord. Let's read Isaiah chapter 60, verse 27. I want to read from the, from the, from the what do you call it, from the message translation. Why is it powerful to wait upon the Lord? Number one, because waiting upon the Lord brings renewal, brings refreshing, and brings upgrade. That's the first thing. Can I have the plans? Isaiah chapter 40 from verse 27. With the water. Thank you. And this is what happens all the time. I have to always come and water this plant. You know what I've noticed? If you don't water the plant, after some time it will dry up. The reason for the spiritual dryness is that you've not been watered of recent. See what the Bible says here. Can you help me hold on to this? 
So you see, this is what happens when you're dry. He says, why will you ever complain, O Jacob? Or why in all Israel? God has lost track of me. This is what some of you feel. That God has forgotten me. You feel so dry. You feel as if, well, what's happening with my, with my appointment? What's happening with this? You, you feel so dry. You feel as if God has forgotten me. See what it says. He says, God has lost track of me. He doesn't care what happens to me. The moment you begin to sound like this, just know that something is wrong spiritually. The, oh, I wanted to take the... The moment you begin to sound like this, know that something is wrong spiritually. As a matter of fact, stress is an indicator you've not been waiting on the Lord. Because when you wait on the Lord, you'll be at peace. So what the Bible says, he doesn't care about what happens to me. Don't you know, don't you know anything? Haven't you been listening? <laughs> Let me say something powerful. He, said, he says, don't you know anything? Have you not been listening? That what? God does not come. For everyone that feels as if God has left you, this is your word. He said, God does not come and go. Man may come and go. Connection may come and go. Contract may come and go. He said, but God does not come and go. Somebody shout amen. He said, God doesn't come and go. He said, if you want to know, he said, God lasts. May I, my God, how do I even say this to you? You will receive it. He said, God lasts. I know that you've been single, but God will last beyond that phase in your life. I heard what the doctor said, but God will last beyond that phase in your life. I, God will last. See, no matter what you're going to, God will outlast everything. God does not come and go. God does not come and go. He said, God does not come and go. He lasts. See what the Bible says. He said, he's the creator of all you can see. He said, he doesn't get tired out. Look at what it says. Nor does he pause to catch his breath. Miracle could not tire Jesus so. Oh my God, oh my God. Uh, I don't know what's happening on this side. They seem too quiet on this side. But, but, but he said it doesn't. So while we're still rejoicing of what happened in one press, God is still doing so much more today. Because he, he doesn't wait to catch his breath. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me an high five. God doesn't wait to catch his breath. Uh, God doesn't wait to catch his breath. I, I don't know about you, but my God doesn't wait to catch his breath. You cannot rush my God. My God is ahead of you. God does not wait to catch his breath. God does not wait to catch it. God will outlast everything. Somebody say, I receive it. Some people are so worried. Prepare for is coming. Uh, come now. He doesn't wait to catch his breaths. This year, you are rolling from testimony to testimonies. Will you say, Father, rush me with testimonies? Oh, rush me. <laughs> rush me. Rush me. Don't take it easy with me, sir. Glory to God. Listen to what it says. He doesn't get tired out. He does not pause. So, while he's working on the marriage, he's working on the job. While he's working on the job, he's working on the, on the house. He doesn't pause to catch. He knows everything inside and outside. He energizes those who get tired. Give fresh strength to those that drop out. Even the young people will tire and drop out young people in their prime will stumble and fall he said but those that wait upon the lord shall get fresh strength they shall spread their wings and soar like eagles oh somebody say hallelujah listen this week has been tough in nigeria you kill for this you kill for that you keep everybody say something negative i say i will not talk that way this is my strength they run and get tired they walk and don't this is me i will not get tired i will not get frustrated 
Listen, Nigeria will not work against it to work for me. It will not work, it will work for me. Are you here? No, every small thing. Hey, I'm tired. I'm th- Why are you tired? No, I don't say I'm tired. My strength is renewed. My strength is renewed. That's what it does for me. Go back to the last. Go back a bit. The scriptures. Go back. He said, even the young people tire and drop out. He said, the young folks in their st- stumble and wait. He said, both the, those that wait upon the Lord shall get fresh strength. Fresh strength. Glory to God. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't get tired. You know, many of you, every small thing, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm depressed. What does it mean? I have fresh strength. I have fresh strength. This country is frustrating me. This country is working for me. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. So let's go back to the word of God. So why why wait upon so this is it this is the attitude you bring into bible study when i'm coming to bible study i'm not just reading to read about matthew mark luke and john i'm waiting i'm waiting for that moment so someone you know you're reading bible oh my shande leboro makaya because there's a moment in the scripture where there'll be an eruption I, and i want to i want to catch it i i want to catch it there's a moment that the word i need for my business will come out i want to catch it Glory to God. So why wait upon the Lord? Because waiting on the Lord brings renewal, refreshing, and upgrade. Worry and stress are indicators that you have not been waiting on the Lord. Because the more you worry and stress, the more you don't have a word inside that stabilizes you. Have you noticed the things we're worried about when you come to church? They kind of shrink. Because as soon as you come to church, your faith grows or it's strengthened. Then when you leave church, why not have a system where you can be at this point of faith continually? Some of you during wine press, your faith was so huge. But after one week, don't be that kind of person. So what the Bible say? So, so, so you know, very powerful. This is why I wait upon the Lord. That's why we wait upon the Lord in prayer. This is why we pray every day. Because every day we, re- we need renewal. Every day we need what? Refreshing. Every day we need what? An upgrade. Have you noticed when they produce iPhones and apps? They will tell you that there's a new version of the app. Yes or no? And they'll say the reason why is that this new version of the app has fixed some bugs that were in the old apps. And that's how life is. There are things that happened last year that you need a fresh touch because the bugs have come. The second reason why we wait upon the Lord is it. And how do we wait upon the Lord? Look, we wait upon the Lord in prayers. In fasting. The second thing why we wait upon the Lord is this. Waiting upon the Lord helps us to be cleansed. Washes us and cleanses us. Ephesians 5 verse 26. Ephesians 5 verse 26. See what the Bible says. Ephesians 5 26. See what the Bible says. The Bible says that he may sanctify. This is what happens. Let me tell you something. The world, the world tells us a lot of dirty things. Look at media. Media does not tell you news. Media makes you afraid. Because whatever is fearful sells. Bad news sells a lot. And before you know it, all you have to be polluted today is to go to social media. You get enough pollution. Is that not what happens? I want to ask you, who did not brush this morning? Why didn't you brush? Or why did you brush? You brush because every morning, all the food you ate yesterday and all the enzymes and everything has the mouth is smelling, so you brush it out. That's how some of you are. Whatever happens to you, if you don't brush it out, you begin to stink spiritually. How do you know I'm stinking spiritually? You're easily depressed. You're, your attitude is funky. You're very, you're just in a very terrible place. You think it's your wife, but it's not really your wife, it's you. You think it's your husband, not your husband is you. You think it's your child, you think it's your job, you think it's your grandchild. See what the Bible says here. He said, This is what it does. He cleanses us by the worship of the word. Sometimes I read something 
And what I read online affects me so much. And I knew that, wow, I need to be cleansed. I need to be cleansed. I need to be cleansed. I need to be... Because this thing I read now, the way it has touched me. But many people don't cleanse. Before you know it, they become discouraged, depressed, defeated, fearful. How did they get inside? So some things that they read, some things they saw, and they began to accumulate, 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 accumulate. How many of you have seen someone that has not had this bad for years? For days, not years, days. Sometimes you, make, you come across a beggar, or maybe sometimes mentally deranged, and you have to miss it. And you're like, wow, the, the smell. Guess what? They're the only one that don't know they are smelling. That's how some people smell spiritually. Because they've not had spiritual bath in a long time. When you hear them talk, you see the smell. They'll be like, see what God has done. God is not faithful. You're like, ah, ah, why do you talk like this? But it happened because of gradually they were not washing. Have you not seen people that they were very on fire for God? Something happened. They didn't take care of it. Then something else happened. They didn't take care of it. Then before you, they became very down spiritually. This Bible waits upon the Lord. It's for washing. For brushing. For washing. But of you need to be washed. The third reason why I wait upon the Lord of, on the Lord is this. Hallelujah. How do you know that you're not being washed? You begin to see untamed desires. Pride that you have conquered before will start showing up. Sins you've overcome before will start showing up. That shows you've not been washed. All of a sudden, the pornography you used to overcome before is not because is that getting you. The loss you've overcome before is getting you. You're like, why is this thing called? Because you've not been washed. You just start having certain feelings that you, you, you've overcome. And you're like, nah, I know where this is coming from. I need to wash. Then all of a sudden, to go to church on Sunday morning, that's it. No, I'm not going to church. I'll do it online. Online. So, what's the difference? Online and on site. Is it not the same God you're worshiping? Okay. Some people, some people, you should be grateful that you can come to church on site. Some people cannot even if they want to come. Ask those in the booby. Some people, where they live, church is literally out of their range. Glory to God. The third thing, the third thing. Oh, glory to God. Why wait? Why wait upon the Lord? Because, we, oh my, are you ready? Lamentation chapter 3. Yeah, let me change chapter 3, verse 28. Why wait upon the Lord? Glory to God. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Lamentation chapter 3, verse 28. Are you there? I want us to read together. Can we read together? Will you read? Okay, let's go. One to go. When life is heavy. Uh huh. Wait. Thank you. Did you hear that? He says, when life is heavy and hard to take, you just lost the contract. Your, your daughter just told you that she has a medical problem. Your husband just said, maybe he's going to get a divorce. The person that should fund the business says, I can't fund the business again. He said, when life is heavy, all of a sudden, the person that you thought will give you February 14, surprise. Surprise you February 4th. What a shock. You got a surprise, but not the one you were looking for. But this surprise was wonderful. You are too good for me. You are too kind for me. You are perfect. I'm imperfect. I don't want to reduce your, I don't want to reduce your perfection. It says, when life is heavy and hard to take, when they tell you that your son has autistic tendencies, when they tell you that your son has a certain sickness, that your grandchild has certain sickness. 
when life is heavy do you know what it means when life is heavy life is heavy is not that eh, my car broke down that's not heavy life when you go to the hospital and they look at you and say i'm sorry i'm not sure you can have a child that's life is heavy when life is heavy and hard to take he says what do you do cry no he said go off by yourself enter the silence enter the silence enter the silence don't they don't they and soak your bed you not come as a businessman you not be walking on the earth you're not talking to your wife talking to your children what's wrong nothing nothing enter the silence that's what you say be still and know that I am the Lord be still and know that I am the Lord it says enter the silence then it tells you what to do in silence he said to what can I hear you he said bow in prayer he said don't ask questions because you can ask stupid things he said don't ask questions what do you do you wait until hope appears that's what it means to wait upon the Lord you stay there until the Ayakama Shadamataya. You stay there until you can guarantee that victory is gone. You stay there until you can guarantee that the results will change. You stay there until you can guarantee that the testimony is yours. You stay there. Are, are you here? See what it says. He says, wait for hope to appear. That what it means to wait. This is why your prayer is boring. Because in your prayer, you don't wait for nothing. But as you wake up in the morning, how can I just pray without hearing? I'm waiting. How can I just read without seeing something? I'm waiting for hope to appear. All of a sudden, although you got February 4 disappointment, as you're praying, you just saw in the spirit, you and your husband. Your friends now wonder, why are you not down or depressed? Because hope has appeared. Praise God. The person that said they will give you the 250 million for business, they wrote a letter to cancel the agreement. You should be going crazy because you spent already 50 million in anticipation of what they will bring. But now, when it got heavy, you entered the silence you bowed in prayer when hope appeared in the place of hope you now saw that God you saw us to supply you not 250 500 million the thing is this most of us don't wait we keep talking to men when we should be talking to God I don't know if they heard me on this side they, they, they keep talking to men when they should be talking to God he said, wait until hope appears. Are, are you here? Yes, I'm a Koba, not shut up. Is, is this how your quiet time is? That's not how most of quiet time is. Most of quiet time is, hurry, hurry, hurry. No, sir. This is wait. Your prayer time is waiting. I will not just go into Monday without hearing the word. I will not just go into Tuesday without hearing the word. There must be something God will say to me when I join next level prayer. I must see something. I must hear something. I go shout on that. I must see something. Wait until hope appears. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Did you notice what Jesus Christ asked John when he was in a tough time? Jesus looked at John and said, what did you see when you were fasting and praying? He said, because now you sound so confused. The assumption was that in the days where it's confusing and challenging in business, there's something you've seen, hope that's appeared. And you carry the image in your heart. So that in challenging times, you can be like, I believe that what God said to me, it will happen right now. 
you are entering into this year as hope appeared my God my God that's why we wait we wait unto hope so when people say we pray every day we don't pray it's not that we are useless people just leaning down no no we wait see what we see in prayer every day we renew what we see we make the picture clearer we renew what we see we wait until hope appears can i go deeper you know hope don't say i'm hopeful that's not bible hope what is bible hope oh my god hope is the permission to enjoy the emotional benefit of a breakthrough before it happens Oh, some people did not get it. Let, 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 let. Those that got it, shout, shout, shout. Let, let, let. Some people don't know what hope is. They, they think hope is, uh, oh yes, I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful. No! What is hope? I wanted to get it. This is the Bible definition of hope. Hope is the permission to enjoy the emotional benefit of a breakthrough before it happens. Hope is that I have not seen it but I have perceived and received it. So people think I'm going crazy. But the truth is that hope has appeared. That was why when there was no reason to shout that Mary was pregnant, Elizabeth started shouting because Elizabeth was enjoying hope, seeing and enjoying the emotional benefit of a breakthrough that not manifested first. When you have hope, people wonder, are you crazy? Because they wonder, are you crazy? Because it doesn't make sense. But the reason why you're hopeful is this. You're already enjoying the benefits of something others have not seen. If you're hopeless, if you're depressed about the future, it's a sign that you're not waiting. Because when you're waiting, you will see a picture. You know what I've learned in my life? Anytime, anytime, and I can give you stories. When we're going to move to Landmark for Wine Press, the pastors were on my case for many days and said that there's no space, boom, 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 boom. And they did all the math, and I said, just give me. And I told them, they said, give me. I said, give me some time. And I don't know what they interpret when they say, give me some time. But this is what I mean by give me some time. Let me take the details into the silence. And what I went there, the reason is that once I can see it in the spirit, it's done. The question is that, can you see it in the spirit first? Before wine press, everything that happened, we told you, that it will happen this way. Didn't, were you not here? We told you to be the most anointed, the most attended. The, there will be signs and there'll, we told you all of these things. Someone says, how did you know? Because hope had appeared. Have you seen it? How do you see? By waiting in prayer. See, see the next line. He said, don't ask questions. Wait for hope to appear. Then he says this. Don't run from trouble. Eh? Face it. Why would you face it full faith? Because hope has appeared. When you get there, the answer within 100 million. I said, it's okay. I uh, will provide it. And your wife says, only where will you find it? He said, don't worry. I've seen that. When we'll, we'll have it already. He said, why? He said, don't run from. He said, face it full face. We heard what the doctor said, but we heard what God said. He said, he said, take it. Why? The worst is never the worst. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Oh, wow. This is, so how do you have a rich and powerful quiet time? Bible study and prayer. This is how you have it. This is the mentality. If you begin to approach your Bible study as a waiting time, if you begin to approach your prayer as a waiting time, it's not boring. 
because what you're saying that lord i'm looking I'm, I'm trying to send i'm trying to let the picture form i'm look i'm here for renewal i'm ready for refreshing so i'm not looking that for time i'm here for renewal refreshing i'm here for all of those things it's a different story hope up here face it headlong learn to lose your fear in prayer Ah, na ko ne 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 manate. What did I say? Learn to what? Lose your fear in prayer. When you really pray, you come out confident. Because faith will rise up strong in your spirits. They will say, "Have you found the money?" You say, "I have." Where? In the spirits. Have you found the contract? I have in the spirit. That's why sometimes when you talk about prayer for people, they have the tendency to be braggadocious if you know them. People that really pray. I mean, I have a lot of friends that really pray. So when I was growing up, oh my God. You know, you see young guys that can pray and they will be, and the reason why is that they understood they had the power that will move their hand that will shake the world. Glory to God. Let me, one more thing I want to add. John Galatians chapter 6. So the thing with waiting is that everybody knows prayer is powerful, episode is powerful, but the major problem we have, this is a major problem that doesn't make it work, is consistency. So we we'll do it once in a while. Like we, the fasting, once. Like we've done 21 days now, is it till next year? We've done prayers now in January. Oh, next level. Oh, this next level. Oh, I thought we'd rest. No, 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 no. See, let me tell you something. There's no rest until we get the results. Consistency. Galatians 6 verse 9. See what it says. Galatians 6 verse 9. This is a problem. The problem with most people is this. There is no consistency. See what the Bible says. Let's read together. I want to go. Let us what? Why? Do you hear that? He says we shall reap. He says, let's continue the prayer. Let's continue the Bible. The problem is, the problem is consistency. Oh, you're like in church this Sunday. What about next Sunday? Oh, you, you prayed last week. What about this week? Someone says, can't we have to leave? Satan doesn't go and leave. The challenges of life does not go on leave. He said, let's continue. Every day. See, see, and that's why it says, give us this day our daily bread. It's a daily, it's consistency. The reason I'm saying so is that when it comes to waste upon the Lord, every Christian does it once in a while. When it comes to prayer, Bible study, giving, we all do once in a while. But the question is this, can we be consistent? The crux of this morning is that you need to add consistency to it. This is why I said it here. Let me read it to you. Results and lasting change are the product of consistency. Not one time or one not one time events. Results and lasting change are the product of consistency. How many of you have planted anything before? Maybe you're a farmer, you planted something before. Wave your hands, let me see. Planted something before. Wave your hands. What did you plant, sir? Cassava. How long does it take? How many months? Six months. And when you plant in six months, what do you do when you finish planting? Do you get the rain? Do you water? Do you do other? Do you check? Do you weed it? Do you weed it? Yes. You weed it. So when you plant for six months, you, you go ahead and you keep walking. And for six months, nothing worthy has come out of it, but you don't abandon it. Is that not how you abandon prayer after two months? I, I, I've prayed in January. Ma'am, February has come. What has happened? And, and that's cassava. Let's, who has planted something that takes a longer time? Anybody here? What, what ma? Pineapple. How long does pineapple take? Please give her the mic. Get a microphone and give it to her. Don't let her speak that way. Yeah, give it to her. How long does the pineapple take? Um, three years, sir. Three years. Yeah. And when you plant, you, you just do you just put it in the ground and come back in three years time? No, now you water it and wait it. Oh wow! Watch this now. For one year. They're busy watching it. For one year, they're busy watching it. And it doesn't work. And second year, and every other person, and, and the cassava person feels as if it's a success. The, the problem is that stop, stop comparing pineapple to cassava. Stop comparing pineapple. 
And the reason why is that cassava is a one-time cycle, right? But pineapple is a continuous cycle. What? Is cassava a continuous cycle also, or is it one time? Pineapple is a continuous cycle. Yes, because you can keep on planting the head, right? So it's continuous. Look at that. When you want a one-time miracle, six months can be enough. But when you want to create a cycle, it can take a longer time. And you keep saying that, but my friend has wedded, but your friend is cassava. My friend has gotten the approval, but that's cassava. Should I be honest with you? Some of you are not even pineapple. You are like a local tree. It's going to take some time to dig in, dig in, dig in. But once you spring up, once you spring up, oh, somebody shout hallelujah. I don't know if you know the story about the Chinese bamboo. The Chinese bamboo, they say for the first five years, it never goes beyond this. But after five years, then it becomes taller. But almost 25 feet. But they keep watering. It says, it says let us not be weary. The problem is this. You do the prayer for two months. You forget it. You do the church service for two months. Even your giving, you say, this year, I'm going to give eyes a offering. I'm going to be tightened. Then probably you do it. Then March, you give up. You don't wonder what's happening. What is not happening? God is faithful. But listen, you are not consistent. It says, let us not be what? Weary. Why does it say weary? I want to ask you something. When an exam, examiner will tell you that use pencil, they know you will use biro. So they want you ahead of what? He told you, don't be weary because he knows that you'll be tempted to get weary. You'll be tempted to say, prayer doesn't work. You'll be tempted to say, giving doesn't work. You'll tend to say, God doesn't work. He says, let's not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap. You know what I love about Isaac? The Bible says, Isaac sowed in that land and reaped what? It is the next month. It took him one year. Is there one year you have said, I will never miss my title giving? To me, one year seemed to be the minimum season. Isaac sold one year. Oh, I want to be a sell leader for two months. I want to sell one month. Is it Isaac sold one year? Let me read the final scripture. Someone says, I want to be very consistent in prayer in waiting. Let me tell you the big secret. This will help you the most. Ever look at this is a trick. This is a trick. If you want to be consistent, you need relationships that will hold you accountable. You need to find yourself in some cell, some department, some prayer meeting like you are in, like me is in a prayer group now. People that can be like, will you come for prayers tomorrow? Because once people ask you for something, you will do better. Some of you that say, oh, no, no, I mean, I but why do you go to the gym? It's not because of accountability. Why do you have a gym instructor? It's not because of accountability. People that are serious with their life, get someone to be accountable to. It's time to stop overestimating your strength and get accountable to someone. Even all of you watching online. My wife is here. She can tell you. For a year or two, there's a guy every Wednesday we do Bible study together. Every Monday. Two hours. Two Bible studies together. Just accountability. I joined a group of 40 pastors all over the world. We said to read a large, like the whole testament together. Accountability. Get into a cell. Get into a married men's group, a business group, a single cell. Some cell in your area and find people. I don't know how to do that. Go to go track. Send a message. Put a link on the, on the line. Tell them, tell them how to do it. Glory to God. Let's read the last verse. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 4. Isaiah 49 verse 4. So, when we talk about prayer, waiting, yeah. But what happens eventually? Look at verse 4. The Bible says this. Genesis chapter 49 verse 4. Not Isaiah. Genesis chapter 49 verse 4. Genesis 49 verse 4. Boom, 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 boom. See what it says. Ever look, read on the screen. Want to go? 
Hold on. That's why you don't see results. Because you are unstable as water. Today, Ramashambo, Ramashamba, tomorrow. Today, I believe that thing Nigeria is working for me tomorrow. They, they, they want to keep me in this country. Everything is finished. Listen. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. One month fire in service in department, then you forget. The key thing is waiting upon the Lord is going to need consistency for it to work. Waiting upon the Lord is going to need what? Consistency for it to work. Let's pray. Stand on your feet, please.